So I read that you, when you were a kid, you were kind of sickly, right? Yeah, I was very sick. I had rheumatic fever at four. And then when we moved the house, we went to a, from a big city to a small village. And that's when I, I, when I came out of my mom, I was completely covered with eczema. Yeah. But I went away and I came back when I was six. With a, like, completely everywhere. And then also, that go, went hand in hand with rheumatic fever. So I either had really bad asthma, yeah. or I had really bad skin disease. You know, so if the skin disease is really bad, my asthma will be okay. Yeah. But if my asthma would be bad, my skin would be okay. So it was going back and forth, whatever I like. I remember seeing kids that way in my school when I was going to school. You once in a while you see a kid with that. What caused that? Why did you? What caused that? It's just the allergy, the allergy that you have, allergy, you know, so oh. there's, there's nothing, cats, dogs. And I mean, if I would play with a cat for half an hour, then the next day I would be eight days in bed because then I couldn't breathe. Like people, I always laugh when people go, <coughs> oh, my asthma is acting up. I go, dude, like <coughs> not able to eat, not able to yeah, drink. I mean, I putting a cloth in your mouth <coughs> because otherwise it's shooting you along. And that 24 seven, so that was, uh, it was pretty rough, yeah. Did it just finally go away? How did you overcome it? Yeah, you grow out of it, you know. Uh, and some people don't. That's how I deal always with uh, how I dealt with all these things, you know. I knew that, like, I have eczema in my arms and my hands and my, my neck, and but not really in my face. And I knew there were people who had it completely everywhere. I've seen that, yeah. And it's the same with the asthma attack. I had it for eight days, like every six or five weeks I had it, but I knew there were people who had it 365 days a year. So I was always focusing on those people. I go, it's, it's not as bad. <laughs> That's how I <laughs> That's get right. myself above. That's so good. And so I read that the kids, uh, some of the kids would bully you in school. Yeah. And how, how did you deal with that? Well, I always somehow, I come from a very athletic family, so they're all uh, gymnasts and, and track and field. Uh, from my dad's side, so my gene genetics were always really good, so I was strong. So they were messing me, but you know, if there was a fight, I, I, I never lost. I was only one move. I actually was thinking about that yesterday evening before I went to sleep. I go, oh my lord, the first, the first fight style I knew was actually a submission game. And that's weird because I started as a striker in fighting, and then later I learned the submission, the ground fighting game. But my first move, I remember, I closed the distance, grabbed someone by the head, with his head under here, so his body's behind me, and then I started <laughs> shaking him as hard as I could until they would quit. And it always worked. <laughs> so uh, they go, wait a minute, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I start with that yeah. when I later started to fight? Were you afraid to fight at all when you were a kid? No, I no, because, you know, uh, once I was fighting, there was so much anger, you know? Right. I mean, if they pay on, it's continuing on a daily basis, they say things. And, and that's way worse, actually, than a fight, uh, words. I mean, I have still trigger words that will trigger me till this day that I really, you know, now I know how to deal with it. But right. 10 years ago, I, that person had a problem. I go, excuse me, you're gonna, you're gonna apologize. <laughs> you know, now I got much more calm. So tell me one of your trigger words so I won't use it today. Oh, <laughs> uh, now let's not do that. <laughs> because then we're throwing it out in the open and then people are gonna start to, so on social would. media, you know how people are. Yeah. You know? They sure would. They start using it every time they see you. It'll be yeah. all over the media, social media. If they want to make some money, you know, because chances are I'm going to hit them. <laughs> <laughs> I guess who's going to get sued? <laughs> this guy right there. That's right. Yeah. And so um, today, uh, there are laws against bullies in schools, and kids don't know how to deal with bullies today in school. What do you say about that? Kids that don't know how to deal with it, so they have to pass laws against the bully rather than encouraging the kids to stand up for themselves. Yeah, the whole world is uh, backwards nowadays. Yeah, it is. It's with everything. I when mean, I was going to anymore. school, we were taught to deal with the bully. Oh, yeah. We weren't taught to run away and you have to pass the law against the bully. No, it's, um, you know, pe people say stay away from the violence, but it, it's the only language those kids understand. Because trust me, I tried tr talking. Yeah. And then once I saw a Bruce Lee movie, and I realized, wait a minute, if I become like that guy, and it took two years for me to convince my parents to fight, I started Taekwondo. That was the only sport at the time that was available in my town. Uh, but I started training with the adults. I was taken under the wing by, an, uh, by the boyfriend of my neighbor. They were beautiful neighbor girls, and of course, she had the coolest guy in town. Right. <laughs> uh, Xavier was his name, and yeah. he took me under his wing. And then I started training with the adults. I've been uh, within two or three months, I started dropping the adults. So then I heard, overheard them talking 
about me in the dressing room. Oh my God, the kid boss, did you see me? Drop Jack with a spinning back kick to the body and everybody was laughing. So then it started slowly but surely, I started listening that I did something good because before that everybody was, it was always bad. I was negative, you're nobody, you're nothing. Yeah. And then suddenly yeah. the adults started talking and then I got into a fight with the biggest bully in my school. And they came by on their bicycles and I always laugh about this. I was on my bicycle also. And the whole of actually <laughs> everybody rides a bicycle. Um, <laughs> it's like 99% of the population does it. It's the best way of transport. Anyway, right. they just shout, hey, leper, whatever it was. It was always something along those lines. And this time I shouted something back. And I heard them laugh and I looked back and sure enough, they, were, they took a U-turn they started chasing me. But I put my bike on the stand and I said, no, I'm going to face it this time. I'm not going to run anymore. Right on. And that was it. They surrounded me with like six kids and then the biggest, Shaki, that was his name, he came over and he started bumping his chest against my chest and asking me if I wanted to hit him. So I obliged and, <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that he wasn't really that strong because it was one point, he was knocked out. Yeah. But his nose was flat on his face, so that meant that he had to go to the hospital, police got alarmed. That meant that the police came on my mom and dad's, do dad's doorstep, so they took me off. How old right were away. you at the time? 14. That's amazing. Yeah. And so you grew up in Holland, right? Yes. What's the difference between living in America and living in Holland? Well, that's a socialist country, um, you know, so if you enjoy paying 65% taxes, that's a great way to go there. But the people are super, super friendly people, very nice. It's yeah. very open. Uh, culture shock for me when I came here with the racism that goes on. We don't have that. I mean, I'll take black jokes uh, in front of black people and black people yeah. tell white jokes and everybody's laughing. I've never on the planet somebody would get offended by it, right. ever. I've been doing it my entire life. So when I came here and I saw that, I go like, whoa, that's, that's kind of weird. You know, that was <laughs> the biggest culture shock for me. Yeah. You know, because you watch TV, you see, you don't really have it, but then you come here and it's, yeah, it's pretty that's prominent. That's new in America too, because when I was growing up, you can make jokes with anybody about anything. Yeah. And it wasn't a race issue or any of that kind of stuff. That just came the last 70 years or so. Yeah. It, it, it should not be, but it's new in America. You know, everything nowadays, you can't say anything anymore, right? It's, right, but uh, I say it anyway. Ridiculous. It's a shame. Are you afraid to say certain things? No, I'm not. You know, but I, I'll make sure that I very articulate myself that it, that it comes out the correct way, yeah. because everything is spinned nowadays yeah, sure into is. something negative, and I, you know, you have to really watch out. Many times I do an interview, and the headline says Bosworth said this and this, which I didn't say, but as an, an audio interview or a, 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 a video interview, and then I got this bombarded with these people trying to trash. <laughs> I said, just listen to the interview. Yeah. Why would you listen? Because that's just clickbait, you know, they want you to click on it, that's why they make a crazy headline, and of course they all come back, well, 50% do it, I'm so sorry, I go, yeah, just l listen to what I said yeah, before right. you say something, but people don't do it anymore, yeah, they read the headlines, and that's true, truth to them, you know, and then they start spreading that same message to everybody else, and if they just also assume that is true, now you have a rumor that comes out of nowhere, that's right, what yeah. is absolutely not true, Yeah. and then try to deal with that, so it's yeah, that's a, a little it's weird. It's hard to prove a lie. Because yeah. once people believe it, a lie, it seems like it's hard to convince them that it's a lie. Oh, yeah, but the smoke is fire, yeah. People yeah. tend to love lies over truth. Once yeah. they, they hold on to a lie, but they... But it's with everything. It's with the negativ negativity, everything. If yeah. you go on Twitter, you got 500 great messages, one asshole uh, <laughs> in between. Guess where your focus is going to be, yeah. right? Everybody's going to go to that. I say, flip it around. Imagine you had 500 bad messages and one good one. You're going to focus on the good one? No, still with the negative. So people are always drawn to the negativity. Look at the news. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I don't watch news at night because I can't sleep. Yeah. I, because it's not, yo, know, if I see the horrible thing that, uh, things that people do, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's not healthy anymore. I want, so you grew up with both parents? Yes. And they supported <clears throat> you uh, uh, practicing martial arts? No, 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 they were very against it uh, because they're very conservative people and they, uh, they always thought it was violence, and, uh, which was confirmed, of course, when they knocked out the bully. Now, I have to say, my mom had so much work with me, like for my eczema, every night they would put on the creams, my, my family would send in bad sheets that they would rip up to bandages, because, and then we would mummify me, that was what we called it, and in the middle of the night it would scratch everything off because of the itch. I had like a big tile next to my bed that I was hitting the whole time because, you know, you prefer the pain over the itching, it yeah. drove me nuts. And I had to do it again, so my mom had a lot of work with me, so I never told him I was bullied. You know, that came out later when I started fighting and the interview started coming. My mom and dad go like, you were, you were bullied. We didn't know. I said, I didn't want to bother you with that. That's amazing. So, yeah. At what point did they accept and were proud of what you were doing? Um, 
It took, it took a while. It was uh, when I became a professional, uh, when I started fighting in Japan, because then suddenly it was, uh, well, the newspapers came, and I come, came on TV, and then the people started following me. Like, for instance, a news crew came over, and they followed me for a day. Mm -hmm. And then my mom saw what actually goes into training. You got to wake up, you got to eat right, you got to do this. I mean, it's military style, right. things that you have to do. There is no drinking, there's no partying, there's no, you got to have to be laser focused. And, you know, once she saw that, she realized, oh my Lord, this is a real sport, you know? And that's when they came around and they, and of course, family members, everybody, because they walk on yeah. the street, Ruten, Ruten, the, you know, boss, Ruten, <laughs> it's my son. Oh, is it your son? Oh my God. And then people would start, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. And my mother was like, what the heck's going on? She didn't know. Amazing. But, uh, yeah, it was really cool to see.